Hello everybody, this is the course on future studies and corporate foresight and let's start lecture two on scenarios in future studies. The lecture falls in three parts. First, definitions and number of scenarios. Secondly, different types and examples of various scenarios. And the third part is about actors and how to use scenarios. Let's start with the definitions and what is a appropriate number for scenarios. Scenarios are at the core of futures thinking. So they have played a crucial role in the field of future studies ever since its beginning. They have been applied from early 1950s. And if you have to remember something very typical characteristic of futures thinking and future studies, it is this idea of scenario thinking. It was concretely introduced first in the Rand Company and later Dutch Shell uh, by Pierre Wack and Hermann Kahn. Later, then uh, other scholars started to develop it. But Hermann Kahn was the person who really uh, borrowed this specific term scenario from the more well-known field of uh, cinema, drama, theater scenario. And what is a scenario? Scenario consists of a stage, plot, actors, sequence of action, and it was used and applied first for military and strategic purposes, then moving to company uh, use and later to more general use. There is already um, rich literature existing on scenarios, many, many books that are still classics, like Peter Schwartz's Art of the Long View, or Wilson and Ralston's book, but there are some newer books as well that I can recommend. For example, in Oxford University, they have developed their own kind of scenario planning approach called strategic reframing. And State of the Future, as publication of the Millennium Project, contains uh, scenarios as well. About the definitions, what are these scenarios in a nutshell? They are manuscripts of the future. Uh, they are possible, alternative, illustrative descriptions of the future, preferably containing visual material. They can be just texts, but in an ideal case, they are also visual presentations. But they are describing a certain future, certain futures, but they have to have also a path involved. What is the path to that specific future? There are several different types of scenarios existing. But in a core, scenarios are concerned with storytelling. So the technique for storytelling can be developed we can make narratives for scenarios in order to make them uh, interesting and inspiring. But I mentioned that the scenarios are manuscripts of the future and they should have a path, step by step, how these uh, futures evolve. But it is interesting that these scenario paths, they can be constructed in two ways either starting from the present and imagining, anticipating various future states, uh, states, conditions, scenarios, or vice versa. We jump directly to the future. And the time horizon can be 2050, let's say. Then we jump directly. It is very challenging to this specific year 
and then we look back from the future to the present and try to think what happened, what has to happen before we reach that time horizon. Backcasting scenarios have been uh, uh, developed and conducted, especially in countries like Canada and Netherlands. And once also for Finnish government, uh, when the government future report was being done, backcasting scenarios on energy and environment were used. There exist several different kind of scenarios. They are in the core, uh, similar, but in details or points of view, they differ a lot. Eric Jans, uh, who was an astrophysicist from USA and a special um, expertise was in technology foresight, he defined scenarios as attempts to set up a logical sequence of events in order to show how, starting from the present situation, they may evolve step by step. So focus on this kind of logical sequence of e events. Hermann Kahn uh, defined scenario as a hypothetical sequence of events constructed for the purpose of focusing attention on causal processes and decision points. So he highlighted this causality and also uh, use of scenarios for decision making. Then Eleonora Massini uh, describes scenarios as tools, instruments, which aid decision makers by providing a context for planning and programming, thus lowering the level of uncertainty and raising the level of knowledge. Uh, I'd like to uh, define scenarios as alternative ways of imagining the futures as futures preparedness, part of futures literacy. So this kind of element of preparing for the future is embedded in the field of futures studies, but it cannot be highlighted enough. So we have to prepare for different futures and scenarios are alternative means, instruments, how we can imagine these. Futures literacy means, it is a concept developed by Real Miller. Futures literacy means capacity to identify and observe things that may develop into future conditions. So future has some seeds already in the present and by observing those seeds we can follow different paths for different future scenarios. Jerome Glenn from the Millennium Project defines scenario as a story with plausible cause and effect uh, that uh, links that connect a future condition with the present, illustrates key decisions, events and consequences throughout the narrative. It is also useful to remember what scenarios are not. They are not predictions, they are not utopias, they are not illogical descriptions, they are not just uh, uh, variations around a single trend. They are not uh, simple uh, imaginative games of thought. Instead, they are logical, well-grounded stories about the future. They should be clear. They should be very different from each other. There's no point uh, developing or presenting scenarios that are very similar to each other. They should be even radically different from each other. They should focus on relevant questions and aspects and concern strategic key questions. And they should also challenge our thoughts. They should provide meaningful images about the future. So now we know that there are different definitions, but the main idea is they are manuscripts, scenarios are manuscripts of the future, 
and there are different uh, emphases on scenarios, how to make them, but there are also different structures or guidebooks or steps how to construct scenarios. So scenarios are not just uh, imaginative planning, we can really construct and make scenarios step by step. There exist several lists of different steps. This is probably the most useful and uh, uh, doesn't include too many steps by Peter Schwartz, eight steps for scenario building. You start by thinking about what is the decision or uh, in a company or a key topic that you want to tackle. We are not tackling the whole world in general terms, but there should be something where we anchor the scenario work. Then we identify essential forces in the local environment of a company, organization, a city or a country. Then the third step is actually very important. We identify driving forces and this happens globally, regionally, locally. It's called horizon scanning. It's very important for the scenario work. No matter which type of scenarios you are making, you are always making horizon scanning first. And horizon scanning means observing trends, uh, also megatrends, trends, also weak signals and even sudden surprises that may happen. And it can be linked with conducting futures workshops, using futures tables as a method, making Delphi studies, etc. Then after this horizon scanning uh, step, you start thinking about key important issues. What are those things that uh, look very uncertain to us, but if they strengthen, they may have a very uh, strong impact on, on society. So they are very important. Then you start choosing logics for the scenario, like a skeleton for the scenario. Uh, very often you pick up two axes and then you make scenario logics uh, by generating four different types of uh, scenarios as combination of these two axes, their end states. Then you elaborate the scenario and then you start thinking if this scenario happens, what are the implications and what kind of things in an organization company we should monitor and follow up uh, based on certain scenario work. This is an example of a scenario work on the future of Finnish universities. It was uh, done many years ago. The time horizon was uh, 2020. But uh, a simple method of futures table was used. Uh, variables uh, chosen were like uh, what kind of control system is applied, what is the organizational structure for university, what is university's mission, what is, the, what is its meaning in educational system. Then you start filling out different states for these variables. And after that, very often it happens in a futures workshop, and after that you start picking up a combination of different states, and then actually you can make many scenarios based on this kind of futures table work. How about the number of scenarios? How many scenarios should be made within, let's say, a company strategy work? And how alternative or how different from each other they should be? As I mentioned, they should be different. If we have one scenario, then it's really not a scenario. When we talk about a scenario, it is part of a uh, set of scenarios usually. If we have two scenarios, then they usually become two black and white. One is positive, one is negative. 
if we have three scenarios, and very often it is recommended to have three scenarios, but it is not problemless, uh, problem free either, because if you use uh, three as the set of scenarios, uh, very often they become uh, like one is a very positive scenario, one is a negative and one is a business as usual. But this is, uh, I think, very often used this uh, set of three scenarios. I recommend to use four scenarios and actually some scholars have said that the number from four to six is the ideal case. So four, because we can use this axis to axis, is very useful. Six may become already very uh, complex. It is not easy to follow and they may not be so different from each other. A Finnish uh, scholar, Yrja Seppälä, has written a book where he, uh, the title is 84,000 years. Futures. So actually there are no limits to futures construction and the number of scenarios is enormous. But for usefulness sake, four is a good number.